I think you can probably see it clearer on this one. This is brilliant. Well, they just dropped in my lap, didn't they? Take a look at these, Rod. This battery's had it, George. I'm changing it. Yeah, no problem. Anything striking? Yeah. Yeah, the typeface, look. The letter E's duff, definitely. And the G and the W. Yeah, and they're all the same, more or less. They're all threats, warning her not to go with other men. Now, the woman who received these letters actually brought them in. Maggie? Yeah, Maggie Hamilton. Where is she? Front interview room. She was uh, in a bit of a rush to get off to work, but I sat down with a nice cup of tea. Good man. Yeah, it was no problem. She's, uh, she's gorgeous. One well, problem, though. They're all anonymous, aren't they? Yeah, but she rang, she knows who sent them. That ex-boyfriend. Right. Let's go talk to her. How much do we let her know? Well, we're just following up this harassment. We divulge nothing until we know the score. What's all the fuss about? Well, it looks like our rapist has slipped up at last. Maggie. Oh, they've sent in the cavalry. Where I started. I'm WDC Rawton, this is DC Skase. We've been having a look at these letters you've been getting. Yeah, pathetic, aren't they? Well, some people would find them scary. They're more irritating, to be honest. I know where they're coming from and I know what it's about. I was just wondering if you could have a word with him. OK, right, what's his name and address? Um, I don't want to get into any trouble, you know. No, we'll just have a word with him, if that's what you want. Philip James Johnson, flat four, 37 Candy Gardens. Can you describe him for us, Maggie? Uh, yeah. Tall, about six foot two, short dark hair, pretty even features. Why are you so sure Mr Johnson sent you these letters, Maggie? They're typewritten. None of them are signed. It's just the kind of silly game he'd play, isn't it? Nothing specific, then. Well, yeah, there are things in there that only him and me would know about. Personal things. Such as what? You know, um, my birthday, the kind of perfume I use, words from a song we both liked, um, but the quotation's the giveaway. When I look up, there shall you be. And when you look up, there shall I be. Yeah, it's, um, from my favourite film, Apart from the Madding Crowd. He sounds quite a romantic. He knows what women like to hear. Well, you must know the type. Had you and Phil been together long? About a year. I finished it eight months ago. Why? Because he liked the ladies too much. I guess in his game, the temptation's pretty hard to resist. What does he do? He's a barman at Terry's nightclub on Dover Row. You know, he's, he's a good-looking guy. He works out. It's on a plate for him, isn't it? I got sick of it, so I showed him the door. He still tried to get back in with me, though. Bless him. How? But he was never off the phone at first, always leaving messages saying how he loved me, how he'd never do it again. Then he showed up at the place where I work. Started getting heavy. But after a week or so, it stopped, so my guess is he found some other idiot to wash his loincloth. And then, a month ago, I started getting these letters. So my guess is she's seen the light and ditched him as well. Maggie, do you live by yourself at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. And you're certain no one else could have sent you these letters? It's Phil, believe me. Look, I couldn't leave this with you, could I? I'm going to be late for work. Yeah, sure. Maggie, we'll probably have to talk to you again, so can we reach you at this address? Yeah, except for between 2 and 10. I work the till at Petrol City on Hellbank Road. Uh, I know. Um, I'm doing day classes at art school. The evening shift pays the rent. Just one more thing, Maggie. Did Phil ever get rough with you? No. He's got a short fuse if you push the wrong buttons, but he's been working on it. He's a pussycat, really. I just don't need the aggravation. OK. We'll follow it up. Don't be too heavy. Just have a word with him, yeah? Yeah. Thanks. Bye. 
Sí. Sí. What a bit of luck. Should have warned her. Liz, the ID comes back. Cheers, George. Do you want to check the form on Johnson? And uh, I'll fill the DI in. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got a match? Yeah, Gov. Eight points of similarity so far. Maggie's letters have the same typeface as the letters sent to uh, threaten the first rape victim. It's such a dumb move from someone who's cute enough to leave no DNA trace. You turn anything up on Phil Johnson? Drunk and disorderly, 92. Caused in a fray in November, 95. Nothing sexual. Oh, proves he's got a temper. Is there anything else? Well, he fits the description. All four rapes took place within a mile of Terry's nightclub where he works, at the time when he could have legitimately been on the streets. Is there anything else we can look for to help time in? A footprint. Taken from the rape of Anne Clay. It's about size 10 or 11. Baseball trainer with a very distinctive pattern. OK, well, if you get a warrant, take a couple of the troops and get over there. If anything tallies, tug him. Forty-three, forty-one, thirty-nine. It's that big cream one there. I'll cover the bolt hole. In position, Liz. Receive, Tosh. Hang about. Leave that a minute, Jim. Is this him? Could be. He's here, Tosh. Stand by. Excuse me, sir. Phil Johnson. Yeah. What's the problem? WDC Wharton, DC Carver, Sun Hill. Can we have a word? What about? Got a warrant to search your flat. Give over. We're looking for evidence in connection with some serious assaults that took place earlier this year. Be easier if you cooperate, Phil. Get stuck! Posh, get out of here! Now back off! You just give me one reason, Phil. OK. OK, I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry. Let's just go inside, shall we? Come on! Don't tell me it's just routine, cos I've heard that crap before. If you've got nothing to hide, then it doesn't matter, does it? Your name's come up in connection with the offences, Phil. It's what? Hiya. It's DC Lanes. How do you do? Blimey. There's enough here. It's just routine. Shall we start with the bedroom? No, I don't remember Phil ever having an old typewriter. And there's no other premises in his flat? Not that I know of. Why? Well, if he says he didn't send the letters and we don't find a typewriter, it's just his word against yours, isn't it? <laughs> You're taking this very seriously. I'm impressed. Yeah, well, yeah. You'd say how much? Not a lot. What about Terry's? Nah, not my scene. I'd rather curl up in front of the fire. Wouldn't you? Depends what I'm coming up with, you know? Bingo! These yours, Phil? Yeah. Why? Unusual, aren't they? They're Italian. I've had loads of them, so what? Pack them up, Jim. Yeah, right. Hey, what is this? I'm arresting you on suspicion of serious sexual assault. Tosh! Yeah? How'd you get on? No time, right? Well, we turn the shoes up, the size is right, and the tread pattern matches. Excellent. Where's Rodden Liz? I think they're about to interview the prisoner. But according to the staffing records at Terry's nightclub, on February the 3rd, you left work at half past three. You didn't get a cab, so how'd you get home? I can't remember. Did you walk? Yeah, probably. I don't think the seriousness of this is sinking in, Phil. For the benefit of the tape, I'm showing the suspect exhibit JC1. So what? You've got a pair of trainers. And if you look, you'll see they're brand new. When did you buy them? I don't know. A couple of months ago. Where? Somewhere in the West End. You'll have the receipt then? Long gone. In your flat, you said you'd had this made before. So where are the others? God knows. 
Do you know a girl called Anne Clay? No. Beverly Jarrett? No. You didn't read about them in the papers? I'm amazed. These were girls who were raped within a mile of Terry's nightclub. Do you threaten women, Phil? No. I don't have to. You threatened Maggie Hamilton. What? When she dumped you, you warned her not to go with other men. What do you know about that? Then you turned up at our workplace. Saying if you couldn't have her, then no one else could. You've been sending her letters. Saying you'll be watching her, haven't you, Phil? I'm not saying nothing else until I've seen a solicitor. Liz. What's happening? He's decided he wants a solicitor. So what are you going to do now? Well, I'd like to go over the victim's statements again. See if I can come up with anything new. All right. Let Johnson cool his heels for a bit. At least he's off the streets. Go. Mm, listen to this. It's you and me. It's only you and me. That's what the letter to Beverly Jarrett says. And the one to Maggie. When I look up, there shall you be. I can't imagine Phil saying that, can you? And when you look up, there shall I be. It's a warning. Yeah, but it's not his style. And if Phil isn't our man... It's a big if. Yeah, but if he isn't, then Maggie is still in danger and she needs to be told. And if he is our man, and Maggie's still fond of him, then she might cover for his movements. I think we have to tread very carefully. The petrol station's on our way home. I can give her a lift back. Still a few points I can check out with her. Okay. Hi. Hi. Who is that? Just some guy asking if we're still open. We're not. <laughs> so, did you manage to have a word with Phil? Yeah, yeah, he's denying everything. Listen, Maggie, um, you sure there's nobody else who knew these things about you? No other boyfriends or anything? No, no other boyfriends. Anyway, there's a pet name in one of the letters. Butterfly. Yeah, <laughs> Butterfly. Phil started calling me that after I had a tattoo done. In a very personal spot. Where's that? Only me and Phil know that. Oh. Hey, you're blushing. Rubbish. Look, um, can I give you a lift? Yeah. All right. And then it's just down the end by the junction. Okay. Maggie, this is going to sound strange. Did Phil ever get rough with you? I mean, you know, in bed. Well, he never forced me to do anything I didn't want to do. If that's what you mean. Is this it? Yeah, just over the road. Maggie. Look, if anything should bother you tonight, please don't hesitate to call us, yeah? You're a bit of a sweetheart, really, aren't you? See you. Sir, 
Any unit free to deal, 161 Askill Road, burglary and assault. Let's start it early, shall we? Sierra Oscar from 561, on way. Received, Debbie. Informants are Mrs. Harris, number 159. Yeah, Sierra Oscar from Sierra 1, uh, show us assisting, are we? Yeah, receive, Reg. This looks like it. Easier. Take it easy. I saw him running away minutes ago. I heard her screaming and I saw him. Calm down. Calm down. What did he look like? He was big, wearing like a balaclava with eye slits. Yeah, anything else you can remember? Not really. And he went that way, yeah? Yeah, towards the common. Right. Sierra Oscar from 340. Come on, let it go. Look at me. What's your name? Okay. 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 Suspect last seen heading towards a common, possibly wearing a donkey jacket. Can't have gone far, can he? Damn! Did a man come here, big bloke? No, mate, no. By the way, you're supposed to tell us about the road works, idiots. Debbie's talking to the neighbour now, but the victim's in no condition to say anything. OK, Dave, keep the scene sterile. He looks possible. Let's have a word. Excuse me, sir. Mind if we have a word with you, please? Do you want to tell us where you're going? Uh, going home. Where would that be? Bring my in. Yeah, we were going in the wrong direction. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I know. I want to get some fags. I think there's a news agent down there. No, I don't think there is. I, I tried the filling station on Goddard Street. I thought it were 24 hour, but it's not. Is that where you've just come from? Yeah. Which way did you come? C across the canal. Not been near Askill Road? No. Give us your name, please. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Andrew Fern. Got any ID, Andrew? Somewhere there. Driver's licence. Sierra asking 595, can I have a name check, please? Yeah, go ahead, Tony. You seem well, a bit hot and bothered, Andrew. you've been running. Foxtrot Echo Romeo November. No, no. IC1. Uh, 21 5. Don't feel so good, though. Yeah, could, could I sit down? Right, stand by, Tony. Yeah, in a minute, Andrew. Is it Andrew or Andy? Hey? Oh, I don't mind which. Oi, come here, stand over here. Tony, he's dropped something. Where? Oh, around there, I heard something drop. You did drop something, didn't you? No. Can't see anything. Yeah, we're trying to come behind the wheel. 595 from Sierra Oscar. Yeah, Sierra Oscar, 171, receiving. Read the PNC, no trace, not wanted. Yeah, receive. <laughs> I, I never dropped anything. Didn't you, mate? What's this then? Go with her, Debbie. Sir. Sir, Tony's here. Right. Who well, is the prisoner? Reg is with him in the car, sir. His name's Andrew Fern. Fits the description to a T. Good work, Tony. Sir. OK, I'll get the DSC down here, Dave. Tony, take Fern back to the Nick and process him. Sir. You know the victim is there. No, who? The girl bought her letters in. More than this are going to be gases. What's this for, then? We're going to need to examine them. You get them back. I'm gonna say I'm gonna run from here, am I? Look, we're gonna need to keep you here for a bit till CID can have a word with you, all right? All right. Number two, please, Gary. Yep. I found that key in the street, you know, I swear I yeah, did. Save it for CID, eh? 
Well, it's about finished here. There's something you might like to look at. Uh-huh. All right, over here. What a signal, eh? They tell me you've already got somebody in the bin for these rapes. Yeah. I'll take you off the ball for a minute, Just can you? Just take care of your end of things, will you? Yeah, all right. Show me what you got, then. Well, I think the attacker might have stood here. We found three cigarette butts smoked right down to the tip. Can't give you the brand just yet. Mr. Skates? Yeah. Mrs. Harris. There is something else. I've just realised. When the man was running away, I've just remembered. He had something in this hand. I only got a glimpse. I think it was a rucksack. If something woke me, then he was there, bending over, just looking at me. I could only see his eyes, and I thought... Did you scream? I told him my purse was on the dresser. Have you any idea what the time was? Yeah. It was exactly quarter past five. We've got a digital clock next to the bed. He said, I don't want money, Maggie. When he said my name, I knew what I was in for. It's not okay, Maggie. Just take it easy. I just thought, if I let him do what he wants, he'll go. But it was... Can I ask you if he took precautions? Yeah. Yeah, he did. And whilst he was doing it, he kept asking me to say how much I loved him. But I couldn't. I just couldn't. So he started strangling me. So I said it. I said I loved him. Do you want to do this later? No. Maggie? No, I want to do this now. When he finished, he sat there on the edge of the bed for ages. He wouldn't look at me. Then he said, if I loved him so much, how come I'd betrayed him? I told him I didn't know what he meant. And then he hit me. I screamed, but he just kept hitting me. He said it was for my own good. He said he saw me get out of a car last night and kiss somebody. He must have been watching me. He must have met the other detective. <laughs> All units from Sierra Oscar read the recent assault. Suspect believed to have dumped a bag, possibly a rucksack, somewhere between Askell Road and Cheetham Road. Sierra Oscar from 517. Receive, Sarge. We'll check the Common and Canal. And I, I turned off Goddard Street into Faith Street. It came down Malpit Road, across Canal, and then. Oh, what is it? Oh, Cheetham Road. And I was down by factories when you chaps stopped me. You didn't go into Askill Road? No, definitely not. Why? Because a man answering your description was involved in a very serious incident in Askill Road. Bit early to go out for cigarettes, wasn't it, Andrew? I, I couldn't sleep. I, I just had to have a fag. I hadn't got any. What time is this? Um, about quarter to six. Did you see anyone else while you were out there? Uh, not a soul. OK, Andrew. Where did you find the key? Well, bottom of Malpit Road. I was going to hand it in once I got me fags. Why did you drop it? Well, 
one of your officers grabbed me. I, I knew something heavy had happened. <laughs> I, I panicked. Do you have access to a typewriter, Andrew? Eh? No. Well, why? So how do you feel about us taking a look around your flat, then? Oh, no, no sweat. No, you, you do what you got to do, mate. Nothing. Stop, Carl. Is that yours? Uh, yeah. Who's that? Oh, his name's Walker. He lives upstairs. He's a nutter. <laughs> got, got him for me, your mate, didn't he? <laughs> hey, it wasn't always like this, you know. No, I've had money, flash cars. What's going on then, mate? Police. Conducting an investigation. Mm, it's about time somebody investigated him. He's a weirdo. Creeping in and out of the place all hours. You don't know if he went out earlier this morning, do you? Yeah, yeah, he did. Around four. Yeah, I heard the dustbin going over. So I looked out the window. Was he carrying anything? I'm not sure. Anyway, you should ask him how somebody on the dole can afford to run a vehicle. What vehicle? That van. I've got to come back to Nick or what then? There's some more questions I want to ask you. And why don't you bring your van keys as well? Right. I told you we had it in for me. Yeah, well, you're a dark horse, aren't you? All right, come on, let's go. What is it, Rod? There was a van like that at the petrol station last night. I reckon this big creep was talking to Maggie. Here, it's on this waste ground by the canal. Looks like it was slung in a hurry. What's this? Looks expensive. Yeah, it might be Maggie's. Could have been nicked during the break-in. Well done, Mike. I'll tell you something else. There's a detail missing off this map. What? Yeah, Jamaica Lane. It was blocked off by a team of navvies fixing a water main. Are you sure? Yeah, positive. Tony Stamp nearly put the aero car into a trench. Never mentioned Jamaica Lane, did he? Right, put it in. Why should I help you after all this? Do you want to find out who hurt Maggie or don't you? You've been bailed, Phil. I'm talking to you as a witness now. Spit it out, then. These objects, do you recognise them? No. Where'd you get that? Do you recognise it? Yeah. I bought it. For Maggie? Nah. For the girl who took me in when Maggie dumped me. Her name's Leslie Otty. She's an ex-girlfriend to Phil Johnson's. I'm not sure how relevant it is. And you want to concentrate on Phil? Well, no, there are inconsistencies in what he's telling us, Gov. Go on, then. I'll take care of the girlfriend. Thanks, Gov. Your vehicle registration document shows your Canley address for the past year, Andrew. Where were you before that? Leeds. Is that why you bought the van from the previous owner? Peter Herdman? Yeah. How can you afford to keep it on the road? It's a struggle. Yeah, but you managed to keep it taxed and tested, don't you? Just. I don't like to be without a vehicle. So why didn't you use it to go and get your cigarettes? I fancied a walk. How far's Goddard Street? Oh, to Mile, isn't it? Nah, it's more like two. Is it? Yeah. So you can't sleep, and you're gasping for a cigarette, and yet you choose to walk almost two miles to go and get them. <laughs> I would have taken the van myself. Wish I had now. So that's definitely yours, is it, Betty? Oh, absolutely. Never thought I'd see it again, though. Thought Phil had nicked it back to give to his old flame. Maggie Hamilton? 
Well, we heard it was all over between them by the time you came on the scene. Oh, I wish. Maybe for her it was. But Phil wouldn't let it go, would he? Oh, she got to him. Big time. To see him act, you wouldn't have thought she'd scratch the surface. Well, oh, come on. Wherever we went, it was old Maggie used to do this and Maggie used to do that. I mean, he even kept this box with all these mementos at the bottom of the wardrobe, you know. What kind of mementos? Reminders of her. Photos, love letters from her, little trinket she bought him. You know, the kind of stuff. Drove me crazy. Then one night, we're in bed, doing what grown-ups do. And he calls her name out. What did you do? What I should have done at the beginning. I piled all the poxy remembrances and every last trace of Phil Johnson into a bin liner and I took it to the dump. I suppose that's how I lost this. So, you left your flat at five to six, yeah? Yeah. What time did you get to the filling station on Goddard Street? I don't know, honest. Well, if you were walking quickly, it has to be, say, 6.20, hasn't it? Suppose so. Well, let's be on the safe side. Say, 6.25? OK. But you were arrested at 6.32. So by my reckoning, you covered the mile and a half to Chitton Road in seven minutes. That's good going. No. No, 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 no I, I, I didn't go main road, did I? I took a shortcut across railway bridge. Yeah, I remember now. All right. You show me. For the tape, I'm showing Mr. Fern the route map. Exhibit ER2. Here. Jamaica Lane? Yeah. Then you must have seen the men digging up the road, but you said you didn't see anybody. Well, it won't be that one then, will it? It'll be next street over. Th that's right, this one. That's Askill Road, Andrew. That's where Maggie Hamilton lives. Our information is you left your flat at four. Isn't that nearer the truth, Andrew? Whoever said that's a liar? Oh, no, but you wouldn't lie to us, would you? <laughs> you, you think I'm a nobody, don't you? No, Andrew. I think you're a rapist. I, I, I want to see a brief. No, there's nobody working here called Fern. Our regular attendant's Pete Herman. But he hasn't turned up today. That's why I'm here. What's he look like? Oh, he's big. Six footer. Yeah? He's the softest grease. Scruffy Yorkshireman. You got his national insurance detail? Oh, yeah. Everything's above board. They tell me he's had a heavy night with some dolly bird, I expect. There's a string of them after his body to hear him talk. You know, he fantasises a bit. Probably never had a woman in his life. Have you got any attendance other than Peter Herdner? No need for any. He just has to sit here all day, then lock the gates at night. Here we are. Is this his locker? Yeah. Can we have a look? Sure. Tough. It'd be full of crap. The Ace to people wasting stuff. That's all right. Slide dog. I think you'll have to shut up shop for a couple of hours, Mr. Baines. Have you heard there's a PNC result on your man? No. What? He's done three years in Penhurst. Manslaughter. What's the story? No idea. Liz is following out now. I've got a suspect in custody from your neck of the woods. She calls herself Andrew Fern, but you should know him as Peter Herdman. Right, thanks. Leads are going to ring us back, Gov. Okay. It's all here, Liz. Love letters from Maggie to Phil Johnson, dozens of photos. Listen to this. My darling, I know you think I'm cruel in keeping us apart, and it really hurts, but we both know it's for the best. Neither of us can change. Not much you wouldn't know about her, then. Look, this looks like a match with the Anne Clare print. Get this lot down to the DSE and have it dusted. Yes, Gov. Excuse me. Do you notice what Fern said? What? 
In the interview, he didn't ask for a solicitor, he asked for a brief. Not as green as he makes out, is he? Maybe Leeds will tell us. Right. Who is to do the honours? Andrew, solicitor. All right, Stuart Harrison. They're trying to fit me up. Yes. Perfect match. We've got him. I wouldn't bank on it. Gov? If he's got his head screwed on, there's a million ways he can wriggle out of this. We got the typewriter and all the stuff from his locker. You take this to court and I'll tell you what's going to happen. The defence are going to tell the jury that all this stuff was thrown out. Who knows how many people's hands it's been through. You've got no fingerprints and you've got no DNA. Without forensic, you can't link him specifically to the crime. What about the false ID? Well, admit to that, won't he? Take his chances. He doesn't make him a serial rapist, does it? Footprints. Come on, Rod. That's a common make of trainer. You need a confession. Yeah. Speaking. All right, I'll be down. What? There's a woman in reception to see me. Your lucky day. Fern is not going to walk from this. <sighs> Maggie. Maggie, what are you doing here? Has a hospital discharged you? You knew. What? You knew I was being stalked. No, I don't. You, you knew! And you never said a word! You never said anything! Hey, come on! Hey, calm down! Calm down! Calm down! And what's all this about, eh? Ask him! Can we go back to where we left off at the last interview, Andrew? You seemed a bit confused about the route you took to get your cigarettes. I can't remember every street name, can I? But you might have been in Askell Road. Not saying that. Okay. We'll come back to that later. You wanted some air, so you didn't take your van. That's right. Are you all right about driving around London? Why wouldn't it be? Well, I couldn't help but notice that you've only had a full licence for just over a year. Is this relevant? Isn't it strange for someone of your age to suddenly learn to drive? Not particularly, no. Where did you pass your test? In Leeds. I was sick of catching buses. But you told me when we searched your room that you'd had flash cars. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You said it hasn't always been like this. I've had money and flash cars. <laughs> if I said that, I were bullying you. I'm sick of being seen as some kind of dosser. I never said that on tape. They can't use that. What's Peter Herdman like, Andrew? Is he a dosser? Who? According to your registration document, the last registered keeper of the van was somebody called Peter Herdman. So what did she buy it off him? Come on. What's he like? Can't remember why. Our information says he looks exactly like you. What we think is this, Andrew. You took out a provisional license under the name of Fern and took a second driving test. Then you transferred the van on your registration document, is that right? Why would I do that? Maybe you could tell us. Maybe there's a few things you could tell us. I'm telling him nothing. Are you Peter Herdman? We can check. All right. All right, yeah, I am. Do you recognize any of these? For the tape, I'm shown the suspect exhibit CD5, a pair of trainers, and CD6, a set of photographs. I told you they were trying to fit me up. I'd like time out to confer with my client. All of this stuff came from Peter Herdman's locker at the dump. This is case. You can take a look at them if you like. This is case. In the light of these revelations, I really must insist on a break. We're supposed to be pulling in the same he direction. Was going. He wasn't. He was thinking on his feet. You were the one that was going. Yes, Tosh. Leeds Nick just rang back. What'd they say? Well, it wasn't just manslaughter. The victim was his wife. What? 
He found her in the sack with another man and he strangled her there and then. And I say it makes no difference to this case. He's right, Rod. You can't refer to it. Past crimes are inadmissible. You've got nothing but circumstantial evidence and conjecture. Circumstantial? What? Tip workers scavenge property that's been dumped. Doesn't mean he used the stuff to commit a crime. There's no forensic link or positive ID. Excuse me, Gov. Are you ready to continue? Yes. Right. We're going in there to get this sorted. We've worked really hard on when this close. Just don't blow it. You admit that all these articles were in your locker at work? Yeah. When did you get them? Yesterday afternoon. <laughs> well, that's a bit unlikely. They were dumped five months ago. Who says so? The person who dumped them. Maybe somebody got them as soon as they were dumped and tipped them back again. Like who? Uh, like the bloke you're looking for. And you got them late yesterday? Yeah. Right. The letters. Did you read them? We can check them for fingerprints. I had a quick flick through them, that's all. You ever seen the girl in the photographs? No, never. What do you make of her? Sorry? From the letters? <laughs> well, you must have been tempted to read them. I know I would have. What did you think of her? Maggie. She seemed okay. A nice girl, a boyfriend with a problem. I'm quoting from exhibit ER1, a letter to the victim. When I look up, there shall you be. And when you look up, there shall I be. Did you send that? No. What do you think it means? Couldn't say. Okay. What kind of man do you think sent it? A romantic? A sadist? Oh, a sadist? No, no. Sounds all right to me. A romantic, then? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hardly the kind of person who'd rape somebody. Well, I shouldn't think so, no. Maggie thought Phil sent to them. Oh, that's because... She's... I don't know. I mean, she, she sees the best in people, doesn't she? I mean, if you look at the letters to him... She goes for every line he feeds her. I'm telling you, you should check him out! You seem to know a lot for someone who just flicked through the letters in the afternoon. Maybe I picked them up in the morning, I can't remember. I think you picked these letters up five months ago, right after Leslie Otty dumped them. No. And you went over them and over them, and the more you read about Maggie, the more you wanted her. No, I didn't. Can you tell me where you were last night? What? No, nowhere. I stayed in. All night? Yeah. Do you ever lend your van to anyone? No. Well, at ten o'clock last night, your van was seen at the place where Maggie works. <laughs> Not true. And the driver was seen talking to her only a few hours before she was raped. Whoever said it was my van's a liar. All right. Petrol station's got a video camera. We can learn the truth from that. How does this mean I raped anybody? You were at the petrol station, weren't you? I was, yeah, but five minutes maximum. Why did you go? Did you want to talk to her? I just wanted to... I wanted to show, show her there was someone out there she could trust. So you did talk to her? I managed a few words, yeah. Then he turned up. I'm telling you, you should be talking to him. Who? Him, the ex-boyfriend. How can you be sure it was Phil? I want it first. I thought it might have been a taxi, so I followed him home, but... When he dropped her off, she... He turned back and... And what? K kissed him. S silly girl. Kissed him. Why don't you go and arrest him and stop picking on me? We already have. Phil Johnson was in custody from lunchtime yesterday till after Maggie was attacked. 
As a matter of fact, that's who Maggie asked for after she was raped. Phil's with her now. No, find out who it was! Then find out! No, no! <laughs> we know that as well. Have you ever been with a woman? Of course I have! When? I don't know lots of times! When was the last time? Oh, this, this guy's a pervert! Oh, the guy who raped Maggie is a pervert! They're trying to make me out to be some kind of animal! He thinks he knows me, doesn't he? I love women! <laughs> Look, the problem is... You keep changing your story. First you're Andrew, then you're Peter. How can I trust you? And who can I trust? Maggie's very trusting. Isn't she? <laughs> she thought she was safe in her house. Then someone broke in and raped her. What did you do after you saw Maggie go into her house? Talk to her, to tell her it was someone who, who loved her, but no. And then you went back? Yeah. yeah, I went back. And you let yourself in with Phil's key? I just stood outside for ages, looking at the house. I almost walked away once, but... I went in to make things all right between us. And you raped her? I made love to her. She... She, she let me... She, she wanted me to do it. I should have heard the things she was saying, how, how she wanted me and how I was the only one, you know. <laughs> when it were over, <laughs> what I thought about, I knew she was lying. To go to myself. So you beat her up? For a slap. But it was enough to put her in hospital. Yeah, you know, she's back with Philip one time enough, wasn't it? <laughs> she's a slag. <laughs> They're all slags. Chris. Gov. Liz and Rod have got their bloke to cough. You're kidding me. I kid you not. He's admitted to all five rapes. They want to know if we're up for a pint down at the George later on. Right, well, let me know when you're ready. If you need to talk to someone, we can organise counselling. I really think you should take advantage of it. Yeah. The other girl told me about it. What's her name? Debbie. Yeah. There's going to be a lot more questions, Maggie. You'll get all your stuff back after the trial. I reckon that'll be enough for now, darling. We're going to Phil's. I can't stay here. Good idea. You'll know where to find her, won't you? Yeah. Well, I better be going. See you, Maggie. Look after her, Phil. Yeah, don't worry. How is she? Bearing up. Listen, uh... Thanks for going in there, you know, I'll come and face it. Well, that's probably for the best. 
Come on, let's get that drink. <laughs> 